Hey guys, what is up in this video? I'm gonna talk about the iOS 8 full coverage and what's new in the iOS 8. So, uh, one of the big conversations around the new iOS release is always in regards to what Apple uh, features Apple will borrow from competing platforms. The idea is essentially that there are a basic set of features that all mobile platforms should have, but Apple always uses its own timeline in adding those features, meaning Android will likely have it first. Today, Apple announced one of the features that iOS users have long been hoping for, uh, that is system-wide extensions. This one is huge because in one shot, it adds a number of features that we have wanted to see in iOS for years to the implementation is more like Windows Phone than Android system-wide extensions. Apple uses the term extensibility, uh, but I'm sticking with more common terminology in general, allow apps to communicate with each other. Apple is doing this its own by, uh, way by uh, creating a live app sandboxes to allow this communication, but the end result for users will be great features uh, like being able to share items on uh, to any app and not just those that Apple allows. Uh, this means sharing websites directly to Pinterest uh, or creating a document in pages that saves directly to Dropbox. It also means that app can share functionality. For example, you could use Wisco Cam filters directly inside Apple's photo app, similarly to Windows Phone's lens feature. Extension also means that iOS will now have widgets, though probably not in the sense that you would normally imagine iOS 8 widgets will only live in the today's screen of Notification Center and not on the home screen, so you will be able to add third-party uh, widgets uh, to add info to that today's screen, including those demoed like ESPN Sports Center and a live widget from eBay where you, you can bid on items directly in the widget. Extensions won't stop there, though, because so far, in iOS 8 will allow for extensions as well. This could mean extensions like any of those you find in desktop versions of Chrome or Firefox, but the one that Apple showed during the demo was inline translation extension from Bing. And to top it all off, extensions means that iOS 8 will support third-party keyboards. As I've already covered at the stock keyboard of iOS 8, you can check out the uh, description of this video, it has gotten some nice improvement, but you'll also be able to ditch that keyboard completely in favor of an option like swipe. Uh, by default, uh, the keyboards are not allowed internet connectivity unless you allow it. This is a huge amount of functionality added in one move by Apple. It may not be anything new compared to the competition like Android, but iOS users should be very excited for the iOS update in the fall. So. Thanks for watching guys, that's it for what's new in the iOS 8. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos, like this video if you enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video. Peace out.